Now, in this video, I will talk about the preemptive method for unit processor scheduling policies. So, under preemptive policies, a running process can be switched out for a different process before it finishes its operation. Um, then, the switch out is uh, based on certain preemptive conditions such as um, clock interval or the arrival of a new process to the ready pool. So, under preemptive method, we have two well known policies, which is preemptive method, um, the shortest remaining time, or SRT, and also round robin. So, shortest remaining time works by um, um, finding or works similar to shortest process next, with the only differentiating factors is um, it allows a preemptive in SRT. So the selection function is we need to find what are the minimum time of um, service time minus or the execution time. So we need to compare between the process, um, um, the shortest remaining time between the current available process in the queue. So whenever a new process joins the ready process, so if the process has a shorter remaining time than the current running process, so the process with the shorter remaining time will interrupt the current process and run instead. So let us look into the same example as in the previous videos where we have five, five processes and um, each uh, process has been specified with its own arrival time and also the service time as shown in this table. So um, in order to like to highlight this difference, so we need to first start with uh, the time slot zero, where process A is the only process um, and it will start its execution. So I label time slot zero to one A. And then uh, because there are no arrived new process, so for time slot one, so I continue or process A continues running in the processor. At time slot two, B arrives. So what we need to do now is we need to compare the remaining time for process A and remaining time for process B. So for process A, service time minus by the execution time. So, so the service time is three and the currently executed time is two. So now the remaining time for A is one. Then we compare it with B, the service time is six and no B proce process B has not been run on a processor yet. So the execution time is zero and then we get the remaining time which is six. So when we compare A and B, it can be seen that A has shorter remaining time, thus um, for this process A um, will be selected to continue um, executing in the CPU. So now process A continues executing. So process A terminates at time step 3, giving process B, which is the only ready process at that time, an opportunity to execute for one time step before process C joins the ready process at time step 4. So here at time step 4, so C arrives. Now when C arrives, we need to recompare again uh, between process C and B. So process C has not been executed yet. So C is equal to, I mean the service time for C is equal to four and no execution time for C yet. So the remaining time is four. While B, the service time is six and we have executed one time step for process B. So the remaining time for B is five. So if we com if we were to compare process C remaining time which is four and process B remaining time which is five, so basically four is less than five. So process C will start to execute. So process C continues to execute until time step six, 
where at this time process D arrived. So basically, this is the point where the selection function is run again um, when process D enters the ready process. So now we need to compare between B, C and also D. So because B has not been executed, um, um, has not, it has no changes in uh, B execution time. So uh, process B execution uh, remaining time remains, which is 5. Process C now, process C now has executed for two time steps. So, so let me change it back to the pen. So now the remaining time for process C is two. Sorry. So now what about process D? So process D service time is 5 and it's, the process D has not been executed yet. So the remaining time for process D is 5. So if we were to compare between 2, 5 and 5, so clearly um, C is, um, process C is still the lowest so it continues to execute in the CPU. So now, at time 8, E arrives. So I'm going to remove here. I'm going to remove all the calculation here. So at time E, process uh, at time 8, process E arrive. So basically, uh, we don't need to compare between uh, process C, B, D and E because process, um, process C already finished its execution. Like the service time is 4. So basic process C already uh, finished its execution. So what we're going to compare is we will evaluate the remaining time for uh, B, C, and E. So if we were to complete, uh, sorry, to compare remaining time for B, C, and E. So the remaining time for B is five. The remaining time for D is five as well, and the remaining time for E is two. So now between these three processes, so. Clearly, E has the lowest um, remaining time. So now we continue executing with E. And then between B and D, so we need to choose the process that arrives first. So B arrives before D. And finally, we continue with process D. Now, let's look at the um, finish time for all of the process. So, process A finished at time 3. Process B finished at time 15. Process C finished at time 8. Process D finished at time 20. And process E finished at time 2. Right, so in the so this is uh, how we do the shortest remaining time. In the next video, I will continue with the round robin method.